Hi everybody. I'm sorry I'm getting a little bit of a late start. I'm Melissa Harris and I'm here uh, for Circles of Wisdom and I'm going to share a few tips with you for using your creative process to um, help you stay calm and focused during this time. I hope you're all okay out there. Um, it is a really rough time and I think most of us are struggling at, at one point or another with some anxiety and um, I just uh, I thought that I would share a few things from my toolbox for what I do um, to uh, to help myself calm down and have fun so um, a little bit by way of introduction I am an artist and an author um, I'm the author of 99 Keys to a Creative Life, and I'm the artist from the Goddess on the Go Affirmation Card Deck, and also the Anything is Possible um, Activation Card Deck. So I've also had a, a lot of images published as great I've published my own images as greeting cards And so I have been working in the realm of creativity my whole life and um, I know that when I bring up the word creativity a lot of people just think oh, I'm not creative um, I can only draw a stick figure um, You know and for me creativity is not just drawing and painting it is, um, it is anything. It could be cooking, it could be, um, could be gardening, could be sewing, could be anything. So, um, let's see. I was supposed to be at Circles of Wisdom, actually. Um, the class got canceled. It was a watercolor play day, and that was going to be uh, a couple of weeks ago. We've got that rescheduled for August 29th, so with luck, that will take place. And also, um, before I forget, um, on May 16th, you can, um, you can register for a remote spirit essence portrait from me, if you would like one. So um, I will show you uh, a little bit. Uh, most people know who I am. Um, this is one of my more well-known images. And uh, a lot of people uh, have recognized me by that image. Um, I have a, a ton more because I do like to create and I'm always painting. But um, a spirit essence portrait um, is uh, a tool that you can use. Um, it is... Uh, uh, where I will do a reading for you. I have worked as a psychic since the early 80s, so I'll do a reading for you, and then I will um, receive my information by visually, auditorially, um, I'll feel things in my own body, and then I will create a watercolor painting that represents um, what would be helpful for you as you move forward on your path. So um, I don't want to take up too much time with that. If you're interested in that, you can sign up through Circles of Wisdom. But this is an example of someone's uh, spirit portrait that I made into a print. And this is another um, portrait from someone. Okay, so... Um, Again, everybody is creative, and I really do want to stress that. Um, so, so let's talk about what you might do in terms of um, calming yourself down and using your creative process to do that if you are feeling anxious during these times. I know everybody is in so many different kinds of situations. Some don't have work. Some are working at home with a lot of kids. and So a lot of different kinds of situations could come up. And um, one of them that I wanted to talk about first off is shifting your focus and getting creative about how you can shift your focus from what you might be kind of chewing on or festering over. Festering is one of my favorite words. So um, I'll give an example of, of how I have done that. And um, I was going through uh, a loss. This was a few years ago. And I just, you know, my mind just kept going back to that problem that situation that loss and grief 
So I decided to take um, an image. I used one of my own images. You don't have to use my image. You can take something out of a magazine. You can do whatever you want that helps you. Um, this one is uh, one of my paintings, and it's a card in my card deck that uh, is called In Your Power. So when I was in that place of grief, sometimes I would really lose myself into that. So I decided to hold on to this image and I kept it with me. And every time my thoughts would go there, I would use this image because for me, this is a woman that is in her power to shift my focus and forget about the loss and the oh poor me and uh, how am I ever going to get over this blah 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 and all of a sudden it just kind of worked and it was like Pavlov's dog so um, every time I started to go there and picked up this image from my purse or wherever I had it all of a sudden I felt lighthearted and I wasn't really in that anxiety anymore so um, that is an example of how you could uh, possibly do that for yourself. Um, you might need uh, even more of an empowering image, so it doesn't matter where you get it, whatever speaks of that to you. Or maybe you just need joy, you know, maybe you need to pick some kind of picture, or it could be a crystal, it could be anything, so that you train your mind, and every time you start to go to that place where you're in, in the, the anxious mode, um, you bring your, your focus back to another place. Um, so uh, another thing that I've been experimenting with for myself is taking my essential oils, which I didn't really use that much before, but if I'm finding that I might need some uplifting, I am experimenting with different oils that I have and getting creative with mixing them up and seeing what the combinations of the different oils do and how that feels in my atmosphere. And sometimes I'll turn on the diffuser with the different mixture that I've created and it's like, no, 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 <laughs> this doesn't work for me right away. So just kind of playing around with that and getting out of my ordinary routine, getting creative about how I can get out of my ordinary routine. Um, Let's see what else I've got in my toolbox. Oh yes, okay, one of the things that I was thinking that some people are probably struggling with is um, maybe, perhaps, um, maybe being in tight spaces, maybe being with your family members um, a little bit more than usual. Um, people are home from work and like that. And getting creative about how you can find the best time for yourself to take some space and be productive in your own way, or at least to feel some more uh, peace and calm. It might mean that you get up an hour early so you can experiment with that and see if you feel okay with that. But um, you might find that you need to get creative in terms of how you communicate with your loved ones during this time, or even if you're not jammed in with everybody, even if it's um, the fact that you are feeling anxious or worried or upset, um, even with your friends or family, you may need to find different ways of communicating that will bring you a greater sense of peace. So um, I was experimenting the other day with my nephew. Um, he was refusing, he, he's in, uh, in, uh, down in D.C., and he was refusing to take any kind of vitamins my brother wanted to give him. So I thought, how can I phrase this to this 16-year-old that will be, um, that will, will get some of this through his head? So I had to ask him, you know, in a grown-up way, um, hey, why is it that you are not wanting to do this? And when he told me, then I had to get creative about presenting um, taking vitamins like his parents want him to do. So in a way that he would be receptive to, uh, to doing that for his own good and the benefit of the whole family. So um, that's another place where I can see creativity coming in. I mean, I've had to reinvent myself I don't know how many times in my life. And uh, so I'm used to kind of thinking outside the box. And for me, 
it really isn't just about painting. I mean, I love to paint. You can, oh, I, I think I had switched. I was going to use my iPad, but it didn't work. You can't really see the paintings behind me, but I have a ton of paintings. And yes, that does feed my, um, my need to be creative, but I also get fed by cooking, by rearranging things. Um, this is a really good time, actually, if you've never done a vision board, to do a vision board. If you've got the space, if you've got the, the peace of mind, it can actually, I think, bring you some peace of mind because when we sit down to create something, we have to focus. And when we're focused, we lose some of that chatter that could normally be going on. So this could be a really, you know, everybody probably knows what a vision board is, uh, everybody out there. A vision board is where you might take imagery or messages, or you could even glue objects on there, uh, thinking of ways that you want your life to look after this is over, or maybe during this time. And, and it, you've got something to look at and go toward so that, um, it's an inspiration. So I like to keep my vision board right at the foot of my bed. So it's the last thing that I see before I go to sleep and the first thing I see when I wake up. That's one thing you could work on. Um, another thing that I love to have my students do is to create their own affirmation card. And it might be enough just for you to create your own affirmation. And if you don't know what an affirmation is, an affirmation is something that is a positive statement. Um, ideally, it should be brief so that um, it's not complicated and you can't remember it the next time you go to repeat it, but something that you want to affirm. So I think I'll just grab Let's see, okay, so here's the little, um, my little goddess on the go um, affirmation cards. And let's see, so here is one. Um, I am filled with divine energy. So it's a statement that is, um, it's pretty short, it's uplifting, it's positive. Um, here's another one, this is, uh, I am overflowing with love. So um, there's any number of affirmations that you could do. Um, these, this actually wasn't my concept, it's my artwork, but I think she did a really beautiful job with the concept. And this is a really great statement. I am enough. You know, how often do we feel like, you know, I'm just a loser or I'll never get such and such, whatever it is, and don't feel that we have reached a place that we want to be. So I like this one where it's just simply, I am enough. So um, you don't need to have these affirmation cards, of course. You can just write on a piece of paper, I am enough, or whatever it is that you need to affirm in yourself. So I think... Um, I think during these times, that's a really great thing to do. And you might have fun actually making your own affirmation card. You don't have to be able to paint or draw to do that. You know, sometimes when people come to my workshops and they've never done any kind of artwork at all, um, I say, yeah, just take a color. You know, first figure out the statement that you want to make. Take a color, take a shape, take a, a stroke. Um and match it to that statement, or you could collage it. Um, doesn't have to be anything formal, but just something, you know, when, when we're creating, our mind is more still than it is when we are just free to have that, you know, monkey mind kind of thing going on. So um, I thought that I'd share that with you. And let's see. Okay, this is another thing that I really have fun with. Um, I'm big on dreams. Um, I think dreams are important. I think that ultimately, I know there there's um, all kinds of interpretation for dreams. Uh, there's the Jungian interpretations, but I think 
um, ultimately, when we have a dream, there is a place inside of us that knows what that dream means. And I, I feel that I get information from my dreams. So um, if you want to work with your dreams during this time, I think it's a really good opportunity. And I've been talking to my friends and they are having some really potent dreams. And I know that um, I am right now having some really good dreams. So one of the things that I do is I keep a dream journal. And instead of writing in it, or maybe on top of writing in it, I will paint my dreams. And sometimes they can be fully developed paintings, but not always. So it's, you know, they can be just really simple like this. You know, um, you don't have to know how to paint. I mean, yes, I am a painter, but you know, really simple, um, they don't have to be paint. These are paint, these are watercolor, but they could be pen and ink. They could be just pencil. Some days I do just pencil. And some days I can't remember my dream. So one of the things that I do to stretch my own creativity is I feel into what color would that feel like? You know, maybe I don't remember a dream, but I, I know how I'm feeling. So how does how I'm feeling translate into a color? You know, so here is uh, one day where I just, um, you know, simply did a color. So I've got all kinds of crazy stuff going on. This one I think was probably a, a nightmare, <laughs> but I don't mind showing it. This one was kind of cool. So, um, anyway, I like with my dream journal, I like to have um, a pretty cover. So I look forward to working in it. And the way that I uh, work in it is that I'll keep that really close to my bed so that my little setup is there so that I don't have to stretch too hard to remember what it was that I dreamed. And these, these little booklets are really great for that because you can refill them. So there's that. Another thing that you could do during this time would be to, um, I don't know how many of you out there make altars. I wish I could walk you around my studio because I've actually got, <laughs> I've got like three altars in my studio. Um, but maybe I'll do that before we sign off. I'll take you on a quick tour around my studio. So um, you could create some different altars in your house and they don't have to be anything fancy, but you could possibly have one for, um, gosh, it could be, a, I have a general one. I have one for my relationship. I have one for finance. Um, I have a few of them, and they're in all different places throughout the house. So you could have fun with that and figure out what you might use on each altar to make it special and to make it represent, um, you know, whatever it is that you want in that particular altar. So I really have fun with those. I get, get kind of crazy with them. Um, let's see. Um, another thing that I have done during this time is um, rearrange a lot in my house. Um, I like to have fun with moving things around. Um, I have, well, I've done a lot of different things. Actually, I've taken some fabrics and put them over different things. I've moved, changed, switched up my furniture. Um, I've actually, during this time, decided to use it to plan how I want to um, make some changes in terms of color in my house. So I don't know if you've got that option, if you have a space that, you know, is big enough that maybe you want to um, see if you can bring some change to, but could be kind of fun. And the same goes for your garden. If you have, um, if you have one, 
and you have the space. I mean, sometimes what I do is just to kind of switch things up, I will go into the woods. I'll dig up some ferns. I'll transfer them into uh, places on my property um, where there might need to be some greenery. Um, I've got these, I live in the Catskills. I live in New York State in the Catskills. And we are, my particular area is the bluestone capital of the world. <laughs> so um, I have a lot of rocks. So sometimes I'll go into the woods and I'll get some ferns and I'll put them near these uh, rocks and then they'll just kind of take hold, which is a really cool thing. So um, let's see. Another thing that um, I was, that I have been doing is, I've been, well, I've been cooking a lot and I've been switching up the way that I cook things and taking recipes and making changes in the way that I usually would use that recipe. So um, for me, it's been a time where um, I've gotten um, I've gotten into making some different things instead of having just the same old thing. Um, I have ha I've actually had a really good time with cooking. And before this happened, I didn't have enough time to really mess with that, or maybe not the interest, but now I've gotten really into it. So that could be a place where you bring in your creative process to, um, to see about switching things up for you and maybe you and your family. Um, let's see. If you wear makeup, if you're kind of a girly girl, and if you wear makeup, then you might go in and see, um, experiment with that during this time. We don't have to go out, so if it doesn't look good, <laughs> then there's no loss there. But maybe you want to uh, play around with that, or actually <clears throat> go into your closet, pick out something that you usually wear, and then imagine going over to your accessories and choosing something different um, that you wouldn't have thought of before and pair that with your outfit. So, you know, for me, this is an example of, uh, these are examples of how I use my creative process all the time. And, and I don't really think, okay, just because I'm a painter, um, that's the only thing that I do that's creative because it's not, you know, all of us, you know, whatever it is that we're doing in our lives, whether we are an accountant or in marketing or, um, you know, I have a lot of friends who are therapists. I have a couple of friends who are trauma therapists and they use all different kinds of creative, um, modalities and, um, bring in creative uh, solutions to work with healing the trauma of their patients. So, you know, for me, the creative process is, is really endless and it, it's just, you're, we're using it all the time, whether we know it or not. So I think that the bottom line in terms of what I am uh, wanting to give to you is a way to make you feel more peaceful as you move throughout your day by keeping the right side of your brain more in focus as opposed to being in the left side and it's like, oh, you know, uh, I'm so worried about such and such and or how am I gonna pay my bills or, um, you know, I don't feel safe going outside, whatever it is that you're upset about. I think that I, I know that the more time we spend <clears throat> in the right side of our brain, the more relaxed we are and the more um, we're able to go about our daily lives with a greater sense of peace. So I hope that there has been um, a nugget or two for you um, in the things that I've shared. Let's see if there's anything else that... Um, Oh yeah, the last thing um, that I wanted to talk about is um, one thing that you might have fun getting creative with is planning a gathering for when this is over 
you know, when we can be with our loved ones once again. And maybe it could be a theme, um, could be uh, just whatever party party you want to make it. But, you know, you could plan, um, you know, how that would look, who you might invite, you know. All of this is part of a creative process. So I appreciate your listening. Um, again, my name is Melissa Harris. I'm going to take you a tour, or take you for a tour around my studio before we go. So um, hang on if you want to see that. Um, my name is Melissa Harris, and my website is melissaharris.com. And um, I'm on Facebook at Melissa Harris Art. I'm on Instagram at M Harris Art. And I'm on Pinterest also. I forget which my name is on Pinterest. And I will be at Circles of Wisdom. I'm at Circles of Wisdom every year and I love it there. So I will be there um, August 29th if all goes well for a watercolor play day. If you want to uh, come and hang out and play, that would be really fun. You don't have to know how to paint. And, um, and then I'll be doing these spirit essence portraits I'll show that again, um, where I do a reading for you and then I do a painting of what I saw in the reading. So that's, you know, those are just examples of what they may look like. And, and you can register for them. I think you can register for them now. Um, I'll be starting to do them on May 16th, but I could probably work with you sooner if you're interested. So Circles of Wisdom has all that information. So I'm going to just take you for uh, a walk around my studio before we go. Um, okay, there's, let's see. Some of these paintings are really big. And here's my watercolor table over there. I hope you're not getting dizzy. I wish you could be with, be here with me in person. Um, it's a really great studio. Um, you're always welcome to come to a workshop here in my studio too. Let's see. Okay. All right. I'm afraid I'm making you dizzy. So, thanks for hanging out, and I hope to see you at Circles of Wisdom or somewhere else. And please stay calm and be well. Lots of love. Bye now.